Hey class, Mr. Hanji here. For today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at section 9.3, which is going to deal with histograms and box plots. Now, for today's lesson, we have one learning goal, and our learning goal for today is that you will be able to create a histogram or box plot for a given data set. So for today, I'm going to give you a data set, and then you have to go through and either create a histogram or a box plot to represent that. So, so far we've talked about how to find the mean, median, IQR, and standard deviation of a data set. We also talked about how to make a dot plot and determine outliers of data sets in which way, if it's symmetric, skewed to the right, or skewed to the left. Today, we're gonna to take a look at histograms and box plots. So. With that said, we are going to start with histograms today. And a histogram is a bar graph that is used to display the frequency of data divided into equal intervals. So instead of just having a spot for one number, we're going to go through and have an area or a section for an interval. So like the set of numbers 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, or 90 to 99. So different sets of intervals. The key is that the intervals have to be equal amounts, space-wise. The bars must be equal width and should be touching but not overlapping. And the heights of the bars indicate the frequency of data values within each interval. So if it meets at eight, that means that the number or the data set occurs that many times in that interval. So with that said, before we jump into example one, I wanna go through and do some analysis of a histogram to kind of point out the different parts of a histogram before we jump into making histograms today. So. We have our histogram here over at the right and talks about scores on a math test and we have the intervals of 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and then 90 to 99. These are the test scores that were received and then the frequency occurs here on the left. So how often the score ended up in that interval. So. For part A, look at the histogram of scores on a math test, which axis, either the X or the Y, indicates frequency. Okay, that's gonna be the Y axis or the vertical. Shows the frequency for each interval. Now, what does the horizontal axis indicate? The horizontal axis shows the horizontal axis is this, and it's going to show the test scores. Now, for part C, how is the horizontal axis organized? It is organized into groups of 10 because from 60 to 69 there are 10 different numbers that occur same for 70 to 79 80 to 89 and then 90 to 99 now for parts d e f and g they want us to indicate how many scores occurred in each of those intervals based off the histogram so from 60 to 69 okay that's going to go in between four and three so four and two, sorry. So that's gonna give us three scores from 60 to 69. Then from 70 to 79, that's gonna be in between 10 and eight. So that's nine. For 80 to 89, that's right at 12. And then from 90 to 99, that's gonna be in between six and seven eight and six, which is gonna give us seven. Sorry for that. 
All right, so that is how we can go through and interpret data and find different parts out from a histogram. And this is what our histograms need to look like for today. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at example one, which is gonna have us go through and create a histogram for the data set. So example one, wants us to create a histogram for this given data set. And that is what we are going to go through and do. And I need to move this down a touch. All right. So we are given the scores of a golf tournament, 68, 78, 76, 71, 69, 73, 72, 74, 76, 70, 77, 74, 75, 76, 71, and 74. So if we create a frequency table, like right here, the data values are going to range from 68 as our smallest number to 78, which is our largest number. So we're going to use an interval width of 3, and we're going to start the first interval at 68. So our score intervals are going to be 68 to 70, 71 to 73, 74 to 76, and then 79, or 77 to 79. So now that I have my score interval, we need to go through and determine the frequency at which scores occurred in each interval. So to do this, I'm just going to go through and make a tally in each box, and then at the end we're going to total up how, much, how many tallies we have for each interval. So our first number is 68, so that's going to be between 68 and 70. We have 78, 76, 71, 69, 73, 72, 74, 76, 70, 77, 74, 75, 76, which is 71, and then 74. So, how much did each of these occur. What is the frequency for each? From 68 to 70, three scores occurred for that range. From 71 to 73, four scores occurred in that range. And then from 74 to 76, seven scores occurred in that range. And then 77 to 79, two scores occurred in that range. So now that I've set up my frequency table, all we have to do is go through and make a histogram off to the right here that represents this data. So I've gone through and provided us with the different ranges here. So all we have to do is go through and draw our bars. So 68 to 70 occurred three times. And then 71 to 73 occurred 4, Let's see, 74 to 76 occurred 7 times, and then 77 to 79 occurred 2 times. So if I go through, draw my histogram bars.
I should end up with my bars looking like this. And then all you would have to do at that point is really just go through and shade if you would want. For each of them. And that is our histogram for example 1A for the set of golf scores from a golf tournament. So that is how you make a histogram. You go through and determine the frequency for each score interval. And then once you have that frequency, you can just go through and draw the bars. Remember, they need to touch, but they don't overlap and they also need to be about the same width. So with that said, let's go ahead and practice one more, and that is going to occur on the other side, for example 1b. Alright, so for example 1b, we have listed are the heights of players in inches on a basketball team. We need to create a frequency table from the data and then use the frequency table to make a histogram. So I have provided us with our frequency table and our intervals from 63 to 82 and they're going to go in units of four. So we have 63 to 66, 67 to 70, 71 to 74, 75 to 78, and then 79 to 82. So what we need to go through and do is indicate or determine how many times these numbers occur in each of these intervals. And then once you have that, we can go through and create our histogram. So with that said, let's go ahead and begin determining Again, I'm going to use tally marks. So 79 is our first number. Then 75. We have 74. 68. 63. 76. 74, 73, 69, 65, 71, 68, 74, 73, and then 70. So now that I have my tallies, we're just going to go through and total them up. So from 63 to 66, there's two players that have a height in that range. From 67 to 70, there's four players in that height range. From 71 to 74, we have six players in that height range. 75 to 78, we have two players in that height range. And then lastly, for 79 through 82, we have one player in that height range. All right, so now that we have gone through and developed our frequency table, we're going to use our frequency table to go through and make our histogram. So. With that said, 63 to 66 occurred two times, and then 67 to 70 occurred four times, 71 to 74 occurred six times, 75 to 78 occurred two times, and then 79 to 82 occurred once.
So using that, we're going to go through and draw our bars for our histogram. Just like that. So that is what our histogram is going to look like for example 1B. Again, if you want to, you can go through and shade in the bars. And that is our answer for example 1B in creating a histogram for the height of basketball players on a team. And that is how you make a histogram. So we've now gone through and made two histograms. Definitely use those two as a reference. Remember when you make a histogram, you have to have equal intervals. Once you have your intervals, you go through and identify the frequency at which the data occurs in that range using a frequency table, and then use your frequency table to make a histogram. So with that said, that is how we're going to go through and make histograms for section 9.3 notes. Now the second part of our notes for today is going through and creating box plots. So we are all good with histograms. Next, we need to take a look at example two, which is going to have us take a look at box plots. So a box plot can be used to show how the values in a data set are distributed. You need five values to make a box plot. The minimum, the first quartile, median, the third quartile, and maximum. So Box plots are also known as box and whisker plots, as you may have learned in elementary school. What we need to do is take our data set. We are going to go through and determine these five data values, minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum. And then we're going to use those five to make our box plot. So first thing you need to do for the data set they give you we need to go through and put it in order from least to greatest. So that is going to be our first task. For part A here, this data set, so we have a number of runs scored by a softball team in 20 games. Um, I'm going to go through and put these in order from least to greatest. So we have two and three threes. We have three fours, we have one five, two sevens, two eights, we have two nines, two tens, one eleven, two twelves, and then 14. So that is going to be our data set for example one in order from least to greatest. So we now need to go through and determine our minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and maximum. I like to start with finding our median first. So to find our median of this data set, just like we did in notes for 9.1, we're going to start at the ends and we're going to work our way towards the middle. So we start with 2 and 14, 3 and 12, 3 and 12, 3 and 11, 4 and 10, 4 and 10, 4 and 9, 5 and 9, 7 and 8, and then I'm down to two numbers left. So that means that our median is going to occur between those two numbers. So between 7 and 8, our median 
is going to be at 7.5. So now that we have our median, we're going to go through and determine our first quartile. So first quartile, we are going to ignore the second half of the data set, including the median. So what we are going to focus on is just the first half of the data set, not including the median. All right, then from there, we're going to find the middle numbers. So 2 and 7, 3 and 7, 3 and 5, 3 and 4, and we're going to be between 4 and 4. And since they are the same number, that means 4 is going to be our first quartile. All right, then we're going to find our third quartile. So to find our third quartile, we're going to ignore the first half of the data set, including the median. Then we are going to find the middle number of the second half of the data set. So we start at 8 and 14, 8 and 12, 9 and 12, 9 and 11, and then we're going to be between both 10s. And because 10 is the same number, that means our third quartile is going to be 10. So I have now figured out my first quartile, my median, and my third quartile. So all we have to wrap up with is our minimum and maximum. Our minimum is going to be our smallest number, which in this case is 2. And our maximum is our largest number, which in this case is 14. So 2 is the min, 14 is the max. So now that we have these five numbers, to make a box plot, okay, what we are going to do is you want to draw a dot at your minimum and maximum for where the number occurs on the number line. So we're going to draw a dot at 2 and a dot at 14. Then we're going to draw lines at the first quartile, median, and third quartile. So first quartile median, and then third quartile. What we're going to do is connect the three lines to form a box like this. And then all we're going to do is draw a line to the dots that then touch the box. And that is how you make a box plot. So again, to make a box plot, you are going to go through, put your numbers in order from least to greatest. You need to figure out your minimum, your first quartile, your median, third quartile, and your maximum. Once you have those five numbers, put a dot at the min and the max. Draw a line at the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. Form a box with the first quartile, median, and third quartile and then draw a line connecting your min to the box and your max to the box as well. So with that said, that is how you create a box plot for example two for this given data set. What I want to do real quick for part B is just run through one more to give you another example, and then we'll wrap up for our notes today. So we are given a list of numbers right here. What we need to go through and do first is put them in order from least to greatest, and then we'll go through and find our five data points. So with that said, for this data set, we have 111, we have two 12s, we have three 13s, We have three 14s, we have one 15, one 17, 
two 18s, one 19, one 22, and then one 23. So now that we have our data set, we need to go through and find our minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and max. So let's first go through and find our median. So to find our median, we're going to work from the ends towards our middle number. So we start with 11 and 23, then we have 12 and 22, 12 and 19, 13 and 18, 13 and 18, 13 and 17, 14 and 15, and to find our median, it's going to be between these two 14s. So that means our median is going to reside right there. And because they're the same number, that means that our median is 14. All right, then we're going to go through and find our first quartile. So we're going to cover up the second half of the data set, and we're going to exclude the median and we're just going to work our way towards the middle. So we start with 11 and 14. So I'm going to cover up 11 and 14. And if we work our way in, we've got 12 and 14, 12 and 13. And then I'm down to 13 and 13. So our first quartile resides between these two 13s. So that means our third quartile is 13 because they're the same numbers. All right, to find our third quartile, we're going to cover up the first half of the data set, and then we are going to work our way in to the middle. So if we start at 14 and 23, then we have 15 and 22, 17 and 19, and then for this data set, we're between two 18s for our third quartile. So that means 18 is going to be our third quartile. Then lastly, all we need to do is identify our min and our max. Our minimum number is 11, and our maximum number is 23. So now that I have all of these data points, and part of the reason I circle the min and the max is it reminds me that I need to put a dot for our box plot at the min and max, so 11 and 23. And then I need to draw lines at the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. So we're at 13. then 14, and then 18. So now that I have my three lines and my two dots, we're going to go through and make our box first. And then we're going to draw lines connecting our dots to the boxes. And that is our box plot for part B. And that is how you go through and do example two. So for our notes on section 9.3, we have successfully gone through and drawn histograms for a situation like such, like we did with example 1b, where we went through and took a data set, figured out how much that data set occurred for each interval, and then drew our histogram using that frequency table. And we did that for example 1b and for example 1a with golf scores. So we've talked about how to make a histogram using a frequency table and how often a number occurs. And then we also talked about how to go through and make a box plot from a data set. So with that said, that is it for our notes on section 9.3 for histograms and box plots. As always, if you have any questions or need any help, just let me know via email or let me know the next time you see me, and I'll be more than happy to help or answer any questions you have. 
Otherwise, be sure to reference the completed notes or reference back to the video if you need any help as you work through your homework. But otherwise, thank you guys for listening today. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.